I'm DFL Chairman Ken Martin, and this is the Chair's Corner. With Governor Dayton signing the marriage equality bill into law, Minnesota has once again proven itself to be a national leader on equality and human rights. This historic law ensures that committed, loving, same-sex couples throughout Minnesota are able to enjoy the same freedoms and rights as others in our state. Future generations of Minnesotans will look back on this moment and thank our state for standing on the right side of history and standing up for thousands of Minnesotans and their families. I am pleased to have one of the key players in the work for equality, Representative Karen Clark, who was the chief author of the Marriage Equality Bill in the House, joining me here today. Thank you so much for being here with us, Karen. Thank you, Ken. Well, as, as you know, uh, in April 2011, the Republican-led legislature put a constitutional amendment on the 2012 ballot asking Minnesota voters to define marriage as between a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. To defeat the amendment, Minnesotans came together through Minnesotans United for All Families, which you and I served on the board Same. together. Um, and they were successful in defeating that amendment, 51 to 47 percent. Um, did anything surprise you about the people who came together to stand for marriage equality, both, both uh, in, in the campaign and as well in the legislative session? I think um, maybe the passion that people had, it was just, it was maybe a, a little bit of a surprise, but it was just so welcome and so necessary. Um, and it was very broad spread. The coalition was a, was an exciting group of people, as you know, yes. everything from religious folks to folks from labor and from many community organizations and uh, communities of color, uh, folks who were bipartisan, different uh, political affiliations. And so I guess... What was gratifying was the depth of commitment that came from all those folks. It was really gratifying. And I don't know if it was surprising, but it was time. <laughs> Absolutely time. I agree. The, um, this was not a partisan issue. Right. This was about human rights, and it transcended uh, partisanship. Uh, we had Republicans and independents and Green Party and libertarians yes, and Democrats did. who all came <laughs> yeah. together, different uh, faith community um, I wasn't surprised by that, but I was certainly um, inspired, and yes. it was very awesome to think about uh, people from so many uh, disparate uh, walks of life coming together and standing up for human rights and equality. So it, kind, it, was, it kind of took me back to 1993, because when we added sexual orientation to the Human Rights yes. Act, we had that same kind of coalition of, of people. We actually had panels. You know, We had a faith panel. We had a labor panel. We had a people of color panel. We had a women's panel. I mean, it was really yes. interesting. They testified as a group to try to change that law. So that kind of set the stage, although that was 20 years earlier. So. Right, right. Well, and you know, there were so many milestones along the way that yeah. this just didn't happen in the last two years. And right. you were involved in the fight, uh, both as your time as a legislator, but even before then, and standing up for human rights. Can you talk a little bit about how we got to this point? Well, it, as you said, I mean, there's a very long story that comes before this session, this legislative session in Minnesota. And, you know, m for myself, back in 1975, I was part of an organization called the Lesbian Feminist Organizing Committee. And our goal at that time was to try to help find lesbians all over the state of Minnesota. There was no statewide organization. There was just starting to be the Minnesota Committee for Gay and Lesbian Rights. I don't know if you're familiar with them, but they were the first organization that said, let's go get active politically and get involved in the legislature. And some of the early methods were maybe not as uh, well uh, orchestrated <laughs> as this one. <laughs> there were interesting attempts, but um, you know, there were people who really took forward the idea of changing the laws, you know, repealing some bad laws, trying to put anti-discrimination law in place. And um, so there, there were some really important people. Alan Spear, yes. my, my um, co-author of the 1993, 20 years ago, Act to add uh, sexual orientation to the Human Rights mm -hmm. Act. He was a part of that whole effort. And, um, you know, before I was in the legislature, 32 years ago, there were state uh, uh, law attempts to change the law. So... You know, there were different starts and finishes, and, you know, there were a couple of governor's commissions where uh, there were task forces that went around and took testimony about hate crimes. We were able to pass a hate crime law that included sexual orientation. I think that was about 1988, mm -hmm. 89. And, um, you know, there were different steps here and there. It definitely went backwards when when DOMA was passed, the so-called defense of marriage. It was just a low point yes. <laughs> in my own personal experience in the legislature and ensure at the national level. You know, I, I worked for um, uh, Paul Wellstone, and uh, it was mm -hmm. one of my 
my um, deeper disappointments um, mm -hmm. with someone that I uh, idolized and still do. Mm -hmm. um, but it really has shown me that um, no one's perfect. Uh, there's been an evolution in so many people's minds on this mm -hmm. issue in the last 10 years uh, for the better, and that's great. But it has been a long, long mm -hmm. fight to get here. And I think about Alan Spear and mm -hmm. being uh, the first openly gay uh, member of our legislature and mm -hmm. certainly one of the first openly gay elected officials in this country mm -hmm. uh, to stand up courageously as he did in the 70s. Um, yeah. You know, uh, that's not where it started, but certainly it helped us move the discussion forward and your leadership and Senator Dibble's leadership helped move this forward as well. This is not the end right. for equality. All right. This is not the end of discrimination. We know that there's so many other important issues that affect all of our families and the LGBT community, but it's certainly a good start in the right direction. What does this law mean for Minnesota um, from your perspective? Well, it, it really does mean equality for many, uh, many LGBT families and uh, it means protection for the kids. Yes. You know, it means so much more, though. It's so interesting. I, my colleagues in the legislature, some of them took very big risks to vote for this legislation. It was, it was um, hard for some of them. Their district had voted for that terrible constitutional amendment in some cases, um, and they were nervous about it. But the, I love uh, quoting uh, one of my legislative colleagues, 27 years old, and said, well, of course I'm voting for this legislation. My, my generation thinks this is the way it should be. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but he was... Um, yes. Re Representative Brinovich was then facing what was considered to be a recall. Well, I heard yesterday that's thrown yeah, out by the Supreme right. Court. He's fine. Um, but he read to me a letter that I thought um, maybe helps answer your question, which was, this was from a former teacher of his, and he just said to him, thank you so much for passing this letter. Actually, it was a, a, a woman teacher, and she said, I remember the little children who came into my office, and some of them had been bullied mm. and scared, and some of them were, you know, being baited. They must be faggots. They must be gay. Mm -hmm. And she said, you have helped make them safer. Yes. And, um, you know, that, that is part of the story, you know, the, the acceptance, the affirmation. Um, and the affirmation is really important. I have to say, you know, even more than I thought it would be personally, it's just a... You know, you get used to living without that, sure. and then being able to know what that can mean is amazing. And I had a couple of colleagues come up to me yesterday before we adjourned in the session and just say, I want to tell you this has been a highlight of my career passing the equal marriage law, and thank you. And I just go, oh, my goodness, well, yes, thank you. You know, they voted for it. And so um, it's very humbling in a way. And it's also, I think, yet to unfold what all it can mean. It can mean, I think... Certainly people who need to have the civil rights protections, but also that um, family affirmation is really yes. important. Well, and I, as I was sharing with you before we started taping here, you know, I think about my grandfather and mm -hmm. many people like him who um, had to live uh, in the closet or yeah. not be who they were. Um, uh, and this really um, is, is, it is about affirmation, but it's also, you know, for me personally, thinking about my kids when they grow up and they look back, they're going to live in a state that, um, you, you know, yes, we have a long ways to go, but at the end of the day, they're not going to know any different. They're going to know that loving, committed people, whether they're same-sex couples or straight couples, are, have the same exact rights and equality and freedoms, and that's so powerful. And so I think about the future. Um, it's not about the past, although we shouldn't forget those people um, who fought so hard for equality. Um, what does this mean to you personally? <laughs> well, I, I mentioned the affirmation. Yeah. You know, one of the other things, you know, I'm sometime in the future going to be retiring and my partner. And, um, you know, the pensions rights that are associated with this for the state of Minnesota are really important. It's yes. one of the things that Alan Spear did not have and was not able to pass on to his partner, right. you know, many years um, when he worked at the University of Minnesota. So does my partner. You know, um, the, the pension rights that are associated with married couples, mm -hmm. you know, for our state organizations uh, could not be passed on to his partner. And um, so that's changed, yes. you know, and it's it's wonderful. And there, there are many uh, things like that that are, you know, 515, I guess, at least we identified yeah, right. in the state of Minnesota. <laughs> I'm sure there's more, actually, because yes. <laughs> some of the subtle things. Um, but it does mean that um, my family gets to be recognized and um, our partner rights will be law. 
Um, and it does mean also, like, one of the things it meant was my brother, who lives in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, good Democrat, one yeah. of the few out there. <laughs> I was going to say that many. <laughs> <laughs> he and, and his um, son and grandchildren came up to be at the Capitol. Yes. And um, one of my nephews, grand, uh, great nephews, um, reported something, and this is partly to answer you, your question, too. He was in a, he lives in Sioux Falls, went to a Catholic school in Sioux Falls, 14 years old, um, had the opportunity and the need to defend our gay rights issues in some way in the school. I don't remember if it was in a classroom exactly or in the playground, but he stood up. I think it might have been in the classroom. And he took a chance, you know, and he was a little worried, like maybe the other kids would come down on him. In fact, what happened instead, they came, almost oh. all of them, in support of him. And the, so the guy who was That's doing so the ridiculing of gay people was, you know, <laughs> taught a lesson, I guess. And, uh, and then my nephew got to get out of school to come up to the, <laughs> come up to the signing of the law as a reward, I guess, yeah. uh, for just being speaking up. And, yeah. you know, I, so that kind of thing, that's very meaningful to me. Um, and I, I look forward to hearing more of those stories. I've talked to several of my friends. I mean, I can't walk down the hall now without someone saying, hey, we're going to get married, so-and-so. Yeah. And, you know, it's just a. Uh, it's just Very fantastic, exciting. absolutely. You know, as we talked about earlier, this was not uh, just a DFL-led uh, right. effort. Uh, there were some Republicans um, who courageously stood uh, forward and voted their conscience and uh, voted for equality. What do you, not just to them, but what message do you have for all the legislators who joined you and Scott in voting for this uh, historic legislation? Well, the first thing is thank you. Yeah. <laughs> But, but then I, I love what the crowd started saying back to us when we did describe to them the fact that some people took political risks by voting for this bill, and their their refrain over and over is, we've got your back, yeah. we've got your back. And what that means practically is that um, in the legislative districts where people do face some repercussions that are negative, um, there is already an effort going by um, the folks who work to help defeat the amendment and then go forward, um, Minnesota United for All Families, there's already work being done to being door knocking, yes. to write letters to the editor, to just give moral support. And I think that's that's really important. And that's that's both across, that's across party lines. And I think some of us, who, I talked with several of my Republican um, colleagues yesterday who voted for the bill and asked them how they're doing and do they need some help. and. Yes, they do, and you know, in that regard, we can be helping each other. Yeah. And so, um, but I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm really grateful. There are m many uh, DFLers who were in marginal districts, took a, a great risk, and I just uh, hope the people who are watching this remember who they are yes. and offer to help them. Um, their, their little newspapers need to get a, a, a letter thanking them because yes. they're getting the other kind of letters. And just uh, a, a personal thank you means a lot to all of us. Absolutely. You know, I spent time talking to uh, uh, several of your colleagues about this issue, and you know, I, my job is not to twist arms uh, at all. And, and uh, but I did want to impart what this meant to me personally. But mm -hmm. also, um, uh, I quote, quoted uh, Martin Luther King's famous quote when he said that it's always the right time to do the right thing, and mm -hmm. that uh, this is a time. This was the right time. And there may be some consequences to pay, but I've talked to some of your colleagues about this. Uh, I think they know um, that what they've done not only has changed their community and the state for the better, but it is going to change our country and eventually the world for the better. And there's very few opportunities you have in your life, uh, both as an elected official, but also just generally to make that big of a difference in the lives of people. So I think that um, we will work hard to make sure that they're not defeated. We will work in partnership with Minnesotans United and all others who want to make sure that those members who stood up for equality are returned to the legislature next year. Thank you. Um, and and what, is, what about with Governor Dayton? Um, uh, you know, obviously he was a very strong supporter of oh, this yes. um, and his leadership on this, I think, particularly the State of the State address and other mm -hmm. uh, points throughout the session was critical in helping here too. Oh, his leadership made all the difference. I'm, I'm very grateful to Governor Dayton. He, he just was so steadfast and he, he spoke to people at all levels and, you know, across many cultures too. I didn't mention that, but that's one of the things I can say that is very meaningful to me about this. I have, you know, I represent a very multicultural district, and um, I've heard from all different folks about 
their own journey through this in their own community. Um, people in the Latino community, just yesterday we were sitting around talking about some issues there, and one of the young women volunteered how she had brought forward her uh, sign in Spanish when she saw that there was an anti-marriage sign out there uh, in Spanish. So, I mean, just that sort of thing. And the yes. Somali community, I mean, there's just a lot of um, growth in all of the folks who maybe have had some difficulties with this in the past. But Governor Dayton's um, leadership meant a lot to them, and it meant a lot to our whole state. And I, I think he, he uh, helps us across many barriers, and, he, and I'm very grateful to him. Yeah, well, we couldn't have done it without so many people coming forward, but really we couldn't have done it without you and Scott for you. your leadership over the years. Uh, even, even five, six years ago when I was running campaigns, I remember talking with Scott and you about this issue, and, you know, the, it, it was such a different time then, and no yes. one thought even uh, that short of a time ago that we would ever be here uh, this quickly. Um, but so many great things have happened to get us to this point in our state's history and, and now in our country's history. I'm so optimistic as we move forward that uh, what we did here will, will result in other good things around the country. So uh, I really thank you for being here today. And I, I thank you for everything you've done for us, for our states, and uh, keep up the good work. Well, it's really been a team effort. I thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you.